Worthy of every praise we would ever bring. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. Sing God a simple song, loud a loud day. Make it up as you go along, loud a loud day. Sing like you like to sing. God loves all simple things. For God is the simplest of all. For God is the simplest of all. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath you could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken.
I can just go ahead and sit down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to go straight to the jokes. So, <laughs> no, not really. So we have uh, three birthdays this week. Monday, it's Kathy Snyder. Tuesday, it's Kim Handel. And on Wednesday, it's Conrad Helwiggy. So Fonda, can you start us off with happy birthday? So we hope you all have a blessed day each and every day. Community Meals had 21 guests this past Tuesday and served 55 meals. And the food pantry served 86 families yesterday, consisting of 190 individuals, which include 28 children under 18 years of age. So to bring that into perspective, we distributed 3,200 pounds of food this week. And we'd like to continue to thank all the volunteers that give of their time to keep these things up and running. Pastor Ashley's e-blast this week mentions we are still doing cleanup at the church. And she also tells us about today's happenings and tomorrow's hope seeds. There is also a blessing which applies to those recovering from the past two hurricanes titled, A Blessing for Picking Up the Pieces. So be sure to read it. And again, I would like to say thanks to all, especially Esther, for coordinating with the Moravians to uh, get the cleanup done. And uh, thank goodness for, the, thank God for that. <laughs> so some ministry opportunities this week, uh, Monday, tomorrow, Hope Seeds from 1 to 3 in the Fellowship Hall. And we're packing seeds to be sent all over the world to help people grow their own food and become self-sustaining. Uh, community meal at 5.30 on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have property at 8 a.m. with bell practice at 6 and choir at 7 p.m. So St. Prayer, yeah, Paul Prayer Zoom titled Talking with God is Thursday at 4 p.m. Food pantry bagging on Thursday at 9 and 30 a.m. with distribution on Saturday at 9 a.m. Couple upcoming things, trunk or treat. So please continue to bring in Halloween candy. We'll put the bags together, as Pastor Ashley mentioned, next Sunday after worship. And we'll hand out these bags during Trunk or Treat on October 31st in the front parking lots from 6 to 7.30. And now, this week, we will tell you a few things about Conrad. First of all, Ethel and Conrad went to different schools together. Conrad is so old that he went to school before they had a history class. That when Moses split the Red Sea, he was on the other side fishing. He yelled, hey, we're fishing over here. And like Ethel, his first car was a covered wagon. He sat behind Jesus in third grade. His first job was to help invent fire. And he took his driver's test on a chariot. His first watch was a sundial. His memories are in black and white. And lastly, like Ethel, he is so old that he has a picture of Moses in his yearbook.
Thank you, choir. This is the time for the kids' message. If Isabel wants to come up. And there's Javion. You beat her today. You got one shoe on, one shoe off. There we go. That works. There you go. Anybody else? Any any of the other little kids coming? Eh, it's up to them. I mean, we can make them. We can wait for them if they want to come up. Isabel wants to have them up here. You got to remind me of their names. Jay, Jaden and Jackson. So I remember Jaden was the was the dragon the one time we we had him here. He was dressed up as a dragon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. We'll see if they can come out or not. They like to play in the, that's a fun area to play in. I think they might just stay in there today. But I'm glad I got you two. You guys are older anyway, so. You guys are the older kids today. So, I wanna, I wanna show you this picture. So what's it look like on here, this little picture? So if I need, yeah. Yeah, you're right. So why do you think we might have this on the cover? So this is Jaden. This is Jackson, and Jaden's coming, right? Sounds good. Come on up. We're going to show you what's on. So there's Jack, Jackson and Jaden. Well, he can stay over there if he wants to. I want to show you guys. No, he said no. No, he said no. That's okay. So, like Javion said, we have a, a person here. She's dropping papers, and another guy's help. Another person's helping them pick them up. So you guys pick up things. I saw you picking up lots of leaves and little branches yesterday. A lot of acorns, right? And so that's. It's a good way to help. And Isabel, just like you're helping Jaden and Jackson. Jackson get used to being in church. So, mm-hmm. You're gonna go trick-or-treating? Oh. So today we learn about, we help others. So what other ways do you help people? You pick up the trash. Isabel, what are there some other ways you help people? Mm hmm You pick up things. I think sometimes giving a smile helps people if they're sad. Giving them a hug. There's lots of different ways to help people. Because that's what Jesus said. He said, I'm here to serve. So can you guys say the word serve? It means to help people. And so Jesus came to serve. And so because we follow Jesus, we do what he does, we serve. And so that's why we have celebrations like Ethel's 100th birthday. We get to serve her and help her celebrate. Where we serve when people get hurt, we help them. We pray for people. We so it's, we do it because Jesus did it. And so we always remember that Jesus loves us. So everybody say, Jesus loves me. And I love Jesus. And because we do that, we then we go out and help others. Because Jesus loves them too. And so we got to sh show them that Jesus loves them. And so we're going to say a prayer. So let's have our hands up today when we pray. And so it's a repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. And thank you for Isabel's baptism. She will now be a part of God's family. And we love her. And you love her. And help us to always serve in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
Yes. Thanks for coming up. Good job. Good seeing you, Jackson. So we'll continue with our scripture readings this morning. Thank you, Amy, for being the scripture reader. Well, I'll get up sooner or later. <laughs> Good morning. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid up on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with the pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make his righteous, and he shall bear <clears throat> their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Psalm 91. We will read it responsibly by verse. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. They will call me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, the fifth chapters. Every high priest chosen from the mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order 
of Michelle's is it. Word of God, word of life. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Whenever I hear the last verse of our Gospel, I think of a cup that I used to have. At the first church I served, we got a cup in the mail, a drinking cup. It was probably from a company that wanted to sell them, so they sent one as an example so that we could buy many in bulk. I kept the one, I don't think we bought any in bulk. But it had the verse on it, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. I kept the cup and used it often, especially in worship, to remind me not only of Jesus' purpose to come and serve, but also my call to serve. I like using that cup to hold my drink during worship as a reminder that worship leads to service. We can hear this in our hymn of the day today that we'll sing after this. It's called Lord Whose Love in Humble Service. The hymn was actually written in response to a call for more music that would express the inner relationship of worship and service. It's one of my favorites because it shows that connection that I have always been drawn to. I believe this song represents my desire, but also shows who this congregation, St. Paul, is. It's a prayer to God. It's recognizing not only the servanthood of Jesus, but also our response to him. When we look at this song, the first verse tells us about Christ Jesus. We hear echoes of our scripture from Hebrews and the gospel in it. He bore the weight of human need, upon the cross forsaken, worked mercy's perfect deed, and all of this through humble service. Only after recognizing Christ's work does the song mention us. We, your servants, bring the worship. And this worship is not just voice or talk, but it comes from the heart. Everything we do is worship. Every gift we have been given is for God's purpose. Every branch we pick up, every smile we share, every time we are with our neighbors after the hurricane, that is also worship. This first verse is that ideal world 
where we know Christ died and rose for us, and we live it out each day. We feel hopeful and empowered to go into the world. And then that second verse, it speaks of the reality of the world that we go into. It uses a poetic device called anaphora, where the repetition of a word at the beginning of successive sentences makes a point. Still your children wander homeless, still the hungry cry for bread, still the captives long for freedom, still in grief we mourn our dead. Yes, even though Christ has died and is risen, still this world isn't perfect. It wasn't when Jesus walked the earth as he healed the sick and freed the soul. We, by the power of the Holy Spirit, are now called to do the same, to do what we can do to make the world whole. The third verse shows us why we are here on Sunday morning or whenever you are worshiping online. It's to grant us vision, to see the world the way God sees it, with all its height and depth and greatness, yet also with all of its needs and burdens. And then we will receive that will and that urgency to share with others. And then that final verse makes the most direct connection between worship and service. Called by worship to your service, Forth in the name, in your name we go. This often is a sending song. It's a song we sing at the end of worship before we leave to go out into the world. My first church had at the exit of the sanctuary and at the exit um, going into, uh, out of the parking lot, a sign that said, you are now entering God's mission field. Other churches like to say when worship ends, the service begins. When we leave this place, or when you turn off your worship online, we go out to all, to the child, to the youth, to the aged. It's another way of saying to go out to the youngest, to the oldest, and then everyone in between. And today that's what we're doing with the baptism of Isabel, making her the newest member of the body of Christ and celebrating the oldest member of our congregation, Ethel Hamilton, now over 100 years old. She and Marty Hillerich are Isabel's sponsors for her baptism. Yes, we put it off a week because of the storm, but we wouldn't put it off any longer. And we really wanted to have Isabel and Ethel's celebration day together, the child and the aged. Sorry, Ethel, even now in Isabel's thinking, you are now old. A hundred years old, you are old. But don't let it stop you. And those of us who aren't over a hundred years old yet, we're not even old yet, so we are also still called to love. We are called to give hope and health, goodwill and comfort, counsel, aid and peace. This song, our, send, our hymn of the day, is showing how Jesus is a servant. It's how it starts and then it ends with how we are to follow. As one author wrote, Jesus' love through humble service is the blueprint we have to live in the same way. So we continue with singing our hymn of the day and we will reflect on how we can humbly serve this world and all who are in it. Thanks be to God.
This is the time for. Is this on? It's on. Do I need to be up higher so I don't interact with the mics? So this is the time for the baptismal family to come forward. And if Marty and Ethel, you want to come forward, you are welcome to as sponsors. But if Ethel doesn't want to come forward, that's okay. She can do it. Yeah. You can even have Ethel sit right in front if you want. We'll have, how about, we'll go on this side, this first. Yeah, you'll be right there, Isabel. You guys want to come forward, too? It's always fun to see a baptism. You get to see the, all up at close. I'm going to put my bulletin down. Wonderful. So God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water in the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We're united with all in the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And so I present Isabel for baptism. So Isabel, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you want to be baptized into Christ and say, I do? Good job. And Tracy. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, you desire to have Isabel baptized into Christ, if so, answer, I do. As you bring your child, Isabel, to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live among Isabel, among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, because today's going to be your first communion today, too. Teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, place in her hands holy scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that Isabel may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Trace, do you promise to help your child grow in Christian faith and life? If so, answer, I do. And so, sponsors. And this can be family, friends up here too, especially Ethel and Marty. Do you promise to nurture Isabel in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism in the communion with the church? If so, answer together, I do. Job. People of God, now it's everybody else and those of you watching online. Do you promise to support Isabel and pray for her in her new life in Christ? And so we answer, we do. We, we do. do. And so we ask everybody, so not just out here, but everybody out there online, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God, if so, answer together, I renounce them. I, I renounce them. But we never just end with what we are against. We also say what we believe in. So do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. So this is the time, Isabel, we're going to pray over the water. So why don't you put your hand over it with me? We're not going to put it in yet. We're just going to hold, kind of, we're going to pray over it. And so it's a prayer. So we say, we give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. By your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life to be you to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever amen, amen. and so we make a sign of the cross right over it so right now i'm going to so this is the time where i'm going to put water on your head and i'm wondering if you can hold the mic Isabel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Good job. Yes. <laughs> and so we all say together. It's about you belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. And so now we're going to pray. I'm going to put my hand on you to pray over you. And so everybody, we are praying. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your children new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Isabel with the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Yes. Oh God, the giver of life, look with kindness upon Tracy. Upon Tracy. And upon... Ethel, and upon Marty, Isabel's godparents, upon Chari, Aiden, and Maria, as they continue to hold them closely. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for Isabel. Strengthen them in their own baptism as they share with Isabel the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, okay, Isabel, come back over this way. We got more for you. We're going to have you come right over here. And so, so we're going to have a little oil for you. I'm going to put it on your forehead in the sign of a cross because oil is special. It's for healing and for remembrance. And you can even maybe even smell it a little bit. It's a way to physically have another remembrance. So not only water, but oil. And so, Isabel, Nolan, Waterman, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Yes. And there's more. So. Marty, if you want to wipe this. And so, <laughs> you'll get that in a little bit. And so, Isabel, we have some scriptures that I want to read to you. 
It's a special candle, so you can... Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. And so Jesus says, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so why we have this candle is to remind you that you have light in you. You are a beloved child of God. And so today is like another birthday. So what do you do on your birthday normally? Mm -hmm. Good job. You can do it. And sometimes you have cake on a birthday. So this is another way to, on October 20th, it's another special day in your life. You can light this candle and have cake and a big party. So it's another special day. So let us welcome the newly baptized. Let's give a big round of applause. And so we welcome you. Everybody can share. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let's say a big amen. Amen. Yes. And Isabel, we got gifts from the congregation for you. And so you had already seen all the... So these are, yeah, you can put the, in the candle right in there, too. And so you got your new God's Work Our Hand shirt, a prayer shawl, a Beanie Baby from my collection, a book, a lot of different certif certificates. So lots of different things to celebrate your day. And so we'll have you guys come up first for Holy Communion, too. But until, now, until then, you can go back to your seats. We can do another round of applause as they go back. And we'll continue with the prayers of the church.
Go in peace. Follow Jesus. Thank you.